And still on the breakfast, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, on Friday announced 160 cases of COVID-19 with total infections rising to 53,477. Reports indicate that 160 new cases marked the lowest figure in the country since the last three months. On August 4th, uh, Nigeria reported 288 COVID-19 cases and 290 new cases just one week later. The NCDC further reported 252 cases on August 25th and 221 on August 26th. It stated that the 160 new cases were from 15 states. According to the NCDC, Plateau State topped the list with 44 cases. Lagos came second with 27 infections, followed by Katsina 18, Edo 15 and the FCT 14. And joining us to give us uh, perspectives on this uh, seeming cheering news is Professor Oyewale Tomori, a renowned virologist and also Dr. Tunde Balogu, a public health analyst and researcher. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to start with uh, Professor uh, Tomori. I want to know, is this a clear sign that Nigeria has peaked and we're, of course, beginning to come down on the curve? No is not a clear sign. And the reason is that what the NCDC gives us are the positive cases, but they don't tell us the number they have tested. We have an aggregate at the end of, I mean, given every day. But each day, we must have the number tested and the number positive. It's only then we can say with confidence whether the, the things are going down. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, in the week 31, we tested 21,000 samples and 3,000 were positive. The week following, it was 3,000 uh, 3, samples tested and 2,000 also positive. But there's a week, one in Salah week, and I want to tell you one about the week of Salah. The week before the Salah, we actually tested about 11,000 samples. And then the week following, it was 5,000 we tested. Of course, naturally, the numbers will go down. So we need more information about the number actually tested versus the number positive. Only then can we say whether we are actually picking or not picking. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move to uh, uh, Dr. Balogun, you know, with, you know, a similar question. Um, you know, for a lot of Nigerians, they may feel this is something to celebrate. Do, do you feel that we might be flattening the curve in any way uh, from your analysis? All right, seem to be having issues uh, getting feedback from uh, Dr. Balogu. I'm going to, uh, Professor Tomori, back to you. The, despite the fluctuation in the figures released, we can still see a noticeable drop in the figures. Um, could this be the reason Lagos, the epicenter, concluded it has peaked, hence opening up the economy and, of course, it may, about to open schools on the 14th of September? Again, I'm sure the Lagos state government has looked into those details, which we don't have. So I, I want to give it to them. And I was quite impressed by the uh, statement by the governor when he said that when the, the borders are open, we will review. Uh, so they, 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 they are obviously are looking at their own data, but we can't say that for the country. So Lagos is still probably looking at the daily data, the number tested, and all those kind of things. And that's why they're opening the universities first, but not the, uh, the secondary school. And they also said, we will look at it when flights start coming in. And so I, I think this is the way to go. And that's the way we should go at the national level. Give us the data. How many are you testing? How many are positive? Where are they? Take the issue of plateau. I mean, you're seeing big numbers from plateau compared to Lagos. Are we testing the same number? Are the different numbers the same? These are issues that we need to. You need clear, complete data before you can make a, any positive statement. Yesterday, we had 250. The day before, we had 160. Well, one should have measured that with how many samples were tested yesterday, how many were tested the day before to get the 160. Yeah, there's a pattern coming, but it is not consistent. And we need to look at all the com complete data before we can say anything about it. Over. Okay, nicely put. Now you're talking about testing. I want to go to what the WHO has said recently, that mass testing is not necessarily better than targeted or contact tracing testing. Uh, would you agree with that? Sure. I mean, when, when this disease started, very people knew anything about it. And so WHO came up with this, say, test, test, test. Then we discovered we didn't have the kits. But then a good analysis of, of countries where other countries that have done well and those that have not done well, they've tested properly. Now, they're what you call testing per capita. 
and also your testing positivity rate. You have to match both together. And let me give a good example. If you go to an area where there's no disease, of course your positivity will be lower. If you go down in a place where the disease is raging, then you're going to get the higher. So there's targeted testing. You need to know where and where. And that is the issue. The plateau state, the legal state, what's the situation? Plateau is now coming up. Are we testing in a place where there's a major problem? These are, equi- these are points that we need to know. Where are we testing? Which group are we testing? Over. All right. It's a pretty interesting um, analysis. And, um, you know, great that we can... Uh, uh, get it from you also. Um, I'm also going to be speaking um, about the uh, government and uh, the people of Nigeria. Um, uh, last week, we were you know, trying to do our own analysis on how the people have also reacted to the slowly you know, easing of the lockdowns. Um, I want to get your thoughts on you know, if government and the people have been slightly complicit in all, in all of this. Well, you see, for, uh, I, I've already said at one time that it was wrong for the government to think that it is the one controlling the disease. It is the people. The greatest role in this control of this depends on me and depends on you, because I will be the one to get the COVID, not the government. Therefore, the most important player in this is the person. So that message must get out to the people. We must participate in it. We must play our role. The government has this role to play. I can play government role. The government can play my role. And therefore, each of us were on our side. But then the government must give us the data and proper analysis for us to know where to act. Where is the problem happening? Which part of the state? These are the information that government will provide. What do you do about, the, about opening, opening shops and whatever it is? Are you going to open it in the hotspot? Are you opening it in the areas that are not? So this must be balanced. And government and people must work together over this issue. All right, I'm, I'm going to quickly introduce Dr. Tunde, Tunde Balogun now, who's just joined us. Uh, welcome, uh, uh, doctor. Dr. Balogun, if you can hear us, uh, you're welcome. It's muted, sir. Um, all right, I'm going to go back to Professor uh, Tumori now. The conversation... Yes, yeah, just... Dr. Balogun, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. I can hear you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. I, I want to get your your views on um, you know what we've we've been discussing. It, it, do you does it seem like it's a case um, where the where you know government seems to be overwhelmed um, as it stands? As Prof uh, also alluded to, the primary responsibility to cut down. The spread of COVID 19 lies with the people. So, the government needs to play that regulatory role, guidance, offer the necessary data to guide people, and then bring together all the necessary steps for people to take. As long as the government is playing that role, then it lies to the hands of everyone to then take those, um, inf- um, those pieces of information provided by the government and then execute all those guidelines. So, at the end of the day, government is doing its best. Every day they keep meeting, they give us um, information, they keep providing us the guidelines, they keep reviewing um, what they are doing, controlling and monitoring what they are doing. So people need to trust the government that the government is doing the right thing and then follow suit. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm going to start with you on this one also. You know, it seems to be a case where we are moving in the direction of a vaccine. Um, other countries have also, you know, spoken about developing a vaccine, you know, as quickly as possible. How strategic do you think Nigeria should be in this direction? Dr. Balogun, if you can hear me. All right, I'm going to go to uh, Professor Tomori now. We also would apologize for the poor quality um, uh, coming from uh, Dr. Balogun. Um, uh, Professor Tomori, if you can hear me, I want to speak yeah. about the direction we're moving with regards to vaccine. How strategic do you feel Nigeria should be in this direction? I think this is the time to join other countries in planning ahead. Many countries are now putting money aside and already purchasing, paying in advance for the vaccines. Nigeria should do the same thing. We shouldn't wait for the crumbs to fall before we do something. I know the uh, vice president has been meeting with a group of people uh, over the issue of uh, vaccine procurement for Nigeria. But I think it's also, I want to also make a case that 
The Nigerian government has a company which it has, which is founded with me and Baker, a biovaccine Nigeria uh, uh, company, which I think the government should put, bring in at this time in, in the issue of uh, vaccine procurement for our, for our use in the future. Now is the time to make use of the available resources you have in your country and get ready. It is not just waiting for the world to finish buying all the vaccines before we do anything about it. So strategically to get involved right now. And, and also, how, how should this inform our um, investment in healthcare going forward, our investment in research also uh, going forward? Because I believe that, you know, as the giant of Africa, you know, we're the country that the rest of Africa should be looking towards um, with regards health research and, um, um, you know, maybe also the answers to certain, you know, plagues and um, um, health crises that affect, you know, African countries. Um, do you think the Nigerian government maybe should be taking this time to invest more in research and in healthcare? You you hit the nail on the head. Uh, we've abandoned research, we've abandoned uh, technology. You know, we are waiting, just consuming everybody's own uh, production. We have not created the environment for our science and research to develop in this country. We have the talents, but then we're not creating the environment for them, and that's the big problem. We're a giant in size. But unfortunately, we're not giant in sense, and that's our problem. And that's where the problem has been with this country, as I'm waiting for to make use of other people's intelligence, you know, to act. We import everything, and that's where the danger is. Now is that to take advantage of this COVID thing, to look back what the errors we've made in the past, and create the enabling environment for science to thrive in this country, and research. It was, there was a situation at that time when we did. But now we lost all that. And that's why everybody is going away to the diaspora. And I also say, if you bring the diaspora back to Nigeria in the environment where they will be as equally as bad as all the people are sitting down. It is the environment. We need to create that environment for research. Put more money into it. A few of our colleagues are also responsible for some of the things that are happening. The money that has been put has not been well spent. But that's where accountability comes in. You can take out the scientists out of the environment that is there. So Nigeria must strategically look at the issue of science and research for national development. I mean, it's not, not, not for, to be just a, for, for a cosmetic thing. We have this Ministry of Science and Technology and doing what? And a lot of false claims coming in about chaos and things. You can't do anything about it. The environment is just not there. Uh, Dr. Tunde Balogun, welcome um, once again. Um, I'm hoping that we can have a conversation now with the time we have left. Good morning, Thank sir. You. You're Good morning. welcome. Um, we, we've, we've spoken about a whole lot, you know, from, you know, what, you know, flattening the curve, you know, would look like for Nigeria and, um, of course, to vaccines and research. Um, I, I want you to continue the conversation with regards research because I believe that that's, you know, the community that you're in. Um, how much, you know, has been going on in the last few years? How much investment has gone on into, into research and how much more would you um, ask the Nigerian government for? Yeah, so it's a collective responsibility. We have to take the issue of research and development very seriously. As science and technology, we cannot um, look down on it. So uh, in budgeting, we should work on creating the facilities, resources, not the tools for us to work with. As we speak now, the, our university lecturers um, have done two for months. Uh, so even if um, this, the COVID-19 and are relaxed for students to resume. What would they be resuming to do? No lecturers in class. And if there are no lecturers in class, no research, no research is going on. Uh, in a, a case where many of the lecturers are spending their own personal resources to see through studies, getting grants uh, and uh, research, research grants become very difficult. So the Nigerian government has to take full responsibility to see to providing um, resources for research. If you look at what WHO joint personal evaluations uh, on um, uh, uh, international health education emergency committee when they met in 2017, the assessment of Nigeria is that with regards to managing epidemics uh, and this outbreak, uh, they found that Nigeria was lagging seriously behind when it comes to um, detecting uh, a pandemic preventing and responding. Uh, so far, uh, it appears that we have, we have taken some lessons from that. We have responded and 
relatively well and try to control the spread of COVID-19. But research will help us, not just only in science, but even in social science. How do we influence the behavior of our citizens such that they can adhere strictly to COVID-19 guidelines? We go to a market, I saw in, in, in your notes um, an hour ago, a visit to markets in Lagos. How are people complying to um, COVID-19 guidelines? Uh, social distancing, physical distancing, face masks, and the use of um, regular hand sanitation. So, that also has to go on in social science, sociology, economics, to see how we can support and improve our um, response to this. And in fact, not, not only response, but the prevention is better at here. We also have to prevent disease outbreak. So, all these things are very critical, and Nigerian government has to rise up. Okay, you you spoke about you know the reaction of people to these guidelines. The the, the um, um, lockdown, of course, is slowly being lifted. You know, across the country. Um, I want to get your thoughts on um, countries out um, aside Nigeria that uh, tried, of course, or hope that they had dealt with the COVID nineteen, but eventually uh, there seemed to be another increase in numbers. Are those things that Nigeria should be afraid of? Do you think that we might have a second wave? Is it seeming uh, like you know you know we're we're completely done with this? Yes, so, um, Prof also talked about these things. So we have recorded um, some record low uh, cases of COVID nineteen over the past three months, but it's not yet to prove. We cannot say that um, we are we have uh, done. I mean, we are we are peaks and then we are going down uh, the the ladder. It's not true yet because we need to see the data. And uh, we've seen in countries where uh, guidelines uh, lax, then some, some somewhat a second wave of um, infection going. So and we have to avoid that. We have to prevent that. So. Uh, the people need to be properly educated uh, as regards this. We cannot just let them know that. We need to know that it is not yet to rule. We cannot say that um, we have peaked. Because, okay, for instance, two days ago, it was 160 cases. Yesterday, we, we had, we recorded 250 cases. So, I would say we are actually going down because it has to be consistently going down. I want to say that, um, um, I mean, we have, we have gotten to our Ebenezer. Okay. Um, um, and lastly, um, back to Professor Tomori, please, as quickly as possible, I want your thoughts on um, the possibility of reinfections. Um, I've also seen that happen outside, you know, uh, Nigeria, where people who had been, you know, tested negative a few weeks later were reinfected. Should we have those fears also down here in Nigeria? Yeah, we should, because the experience of other countries, I think apart from Taiwan, there's no other country that has eased lockdown that has not gone back again. Israel was a fantastic example. They eased their lockdown, and within three, four weeks, they were back to, to where they were before. We have not even reached the, the end of our problem, so we can't be even talking about the second, second wave. So, and there have been evidence in some other parts of the world that people can be reinfected. And the reason being that we're dealing with a respiratory virus. And when you, a good example I can give is when you talk about the common cold. I mean, you can have cold now, and in another two, three months, you get cold again because the viruses uh, that affect the, the trachea, I mean, the region where the viruses affect, the, the cells normally slough off over a time. New cells are coming in that are not protected. So there's a possibility of, of reinfection. So we have to put that at the back of our, of our mind. And then the other issue that I think I want to, to let our people know is that in the countries that that the Taiwan has said, which has not really experienced second infection. They did something, and it was compliance was almost 100%. In fact, there, there was a report of one person in, in, in Taiwan who failed to report that he had the case, and they fined the person 10,000 US dollars. So that's how, how situations are, how strictly they keep to their business. It's a country where we, we totally abandoned, not complying with anything. And I, I, I'm very sure with the arrival, if we ease anything, I mean, see all the easing down we've done. When we lock down, whether we lock down or we don't lock down, the numbers kept rising. It means that we're not complying. And so whether we bring it in or not, uh, I, I, that way I referred to the Lagos state where they said that they will review. Because they know that when people start coming in, we're going to have a problem again. And the numbers will keep rising. If you get the records of NCDC, 800 people are the people who have 
uh, travel history of this 50 something thousand that we have. Some of, they had evidence of about 20% of people who had contact with those ones. But we have another 75% where we don't know where they got the infection from at all. These are the issues that we need to be addressed properly. Where are those people getting the infection from? Who gave it to them? And if our lab results are not coming out on time, and you test me now, and you tell me two weeks later that I'm positive, where have I been in the last two weeks? I can't tell you. If my result came out yesterday, I mean, I got it yesterday, and the result came out tomorrow, then I will tell you yesterday I was A, B, C. Then you can trace people completely. Yeah. Come and ask me two weeks later, why would I know where I was in two weeks, two weeks ago? These are some of the things we're talking about. Timely test results and proper uh, testing strategy. Until we get to that, forget it. I believe that what is happening, I mean, you see what is happening with a lot, lot of people. Burial ceremonies are going on. People are going about their duty as if there's no problem in the country. We will continue to have this, this, this disease with us for a long time to come. Professor Oyewale Tomori, a renowned virologist, and uh, Dr. Tunde Balogun, a public health analyst and researcher. Thank you both for speaking with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.